I'm picking away at this. I've got the top of the driver's side rear quarter sanded down. I had just blended the paint from this belt line. I, I took, I unmasked the car and blended the paint down to this belt line, probably to somewhere around here. And then I sprayed over it with black. So as you can see, I've started just working on the roof, working on the belt line here and started coming down this quarter. It's hard to tell how good the match is. I know it's going to be a little bit off. You know, the, the, the paint that was on the car is 60 years old. So, uh, so far I'm happy with the way it's looking. Sorry, it's so dark. Uh, the car's outside to wet sand. I really don't want to wet sand it inside the, inside the garage. So I rolled it up best I could to get it close to the, to the light. So I'm going to keep, I'm going to keep sanding as I, as I get sanded, I'll keep rolling the car backwards until I can get it back in the garage. So that's what I got so far. I missed a spot here on the back of the hinge because the door was open. So I'll have to touch that up afterwards with a brush. But so far, so good. You're my shop dog, huh? Yep, let's see in the house. All right, guys, well, this is what I've got so far. I moved the car into the garage. So far, pretty good. Um, you know, it'll be something I'm gonna keep working on, working towards to get exactly where I want. The color isn't an identical match, but it's pretty dang close. Got some work obviously to do around the window, but I'm feeling pretty good the way it's looking. Uh, big difference from the color it was this morning before I sprayed the black and started wet sand and it's definitely lightened up a lot, which is great. I don't know if I'm going to put a matte clear over the car at this point. Uh, I'm just going to wait and see how things turn out and how, how things look moving forward. So, uh, And it is going to dry up. I think it is going to lighten up a little bit once everything's dry and cleaned off. So, I'm really trying not to break through. I broke through in a couple spots already. Thing is, I only put three coats of finish on this car expecting to, to kind of redo things. I wasn't sure if I was going to like it with the finish that was on it because I didn't think the color was going to match. But I think at this point now it's looking pretty good. So I'm kind of regretting not putting a couple additional coats on because it's not that it's thin in areas. I just have to be super careful. So it may be something where I go around and do a couple little spots here or there, some touch-ups in the future. But for now it's, it's coming along pretty good. I'm happy with it the way it's looking. How's it going everybody? It's getting late. I've been working on the coop, trying to clean the yard, trying to get food cooked, clean the garage. I got a 15 pound brisket being cooked right now. We have mac and cheese, chili, pulled pork. I get seven pounds of sausage to cook up. So I'm in the process of trying to get the coop done, trying to get everything timed and things in the oven and cook and all that other stuff. And my girlfriend's kicking butt. She's right at the store doing her thing. So I'm out in the garage, I'm working on the coupe. You can see I've added a few little colors here and there. The top of the car is a little more blue than the bottom of the car. So what I did was I actually just took some green spray paint. It was like a, a light green. You can see it there on the cover or the cap, the nozzle. I just sprayed over it, I dusted over it, and it's kind of got like a spotty look to it. And then I took some brown that I have, and I did some brown just in some areas where there's still a lot of black, like spot there where I went through. There's a spot here that I thought would look good. There's a little ding here. Uh, so kind of went around and, and hit 
brown did a little bit of brown here and there on the paint and the reason why is if you look at the paint on the rest of the car on the lower portion of the car there's a lot of rust coming through this paint you can see it here so i'm just trying to kind of recreate some of that in areas uh again i don't want to go crazy and make this thing look like a just a complete patina ride but the problem is is i'm only painting half the car so i'm really trying to match the bottom half of the car and if I, if i was doing the bottom half of the car trying to match the top of the car i think it would actually be easier because your eye wouldn't be drawn to it so the reason i'm, I'm really trying to be super particular with it is this is what you're going to see you're going to see the top of the car first and i'm really trying to make that so it doesn't you don't draw an eye to, to a line to a certain spot where it, it's obvious that i stopped so i think it's getting there um i've got all night to work on it and i plan on doing that plan on working pretty much through the night if i have to tomorrow's a party i got people showing up 10 o'clock tomorrow morning for a cruise car cruise and then we're coming back for food so i'm just trying to get this done i still have the other half of the car plus i have the door of the, the top of the driver's door plus i have the deck lid that i haven't even started working on yet this ought to go pretty quick i'm thinking just because it's one big flat surface it's all the ins and outs on the roof of the car and inside the windows and things like that that are really time consuming so so this Guys, girls, it's midnight. It's actually Saturday morning. Hold on. I'm in the garage still working on the coop. Man, I think I did it. I I think I did it. I got uh as you saw, I painted the roof. I coated it with a black SEM product, which was in a which was an enamel and a spray can. I'll grab that for you so you can see it. It's called Multimax. Flat black 61013. Um, again, it's just a rattle can, but it is an automotive finish. And I use that to go over the finish turquoise color. I sanded that down, and what I did was I would sand it down to about 95%. I got most of the black off, I probably 98%. And then what I did was I used a combination of two color paints. And the reason why I picked these colors is because when you look at the car itself, there's some rust coming through on the paint and that is from the belt line down. That's the, it's the whole car, it's everywhere. So there's some rust column coming through and then this color, the original color, just happened to be a little greener than the the top of the car, the top of the car, it was just a little more of a bluish color turquoise. So what I did was, I had this in my cabinet. It's just a, again, rattle can, a satin green. I don't know what the color was, but it's, I just wanted the green. And what I did was I just barely, I, I held it over the car like this. I'm not gonna do it cause the car is done but I just sprayed it above the car and I just kind of let it dry fall down onto the top of the car. And if you look close, you can just see little blotches here and there, here and there. I let that sit. I then took a Rust-Oleum can, again, just what I had in the sh on the shelf in, in my one of my cabinets. And this is like a, a hammered bronze and I was a little nervous, I'm not gonna lie, I was a little nervous about the hammered bronze, but when you go around on the car and you look, there's, there's metal showing through in certain areas where, where, where I sanded, and I was trying to get the, the brown in some of these areas. I was trying to use that color and put it up on the top of the car 
So I kind of went around wherever there was a little, you know, blemish or, or whatever in the body of the car. I sprayed that bronze like I did it around the wiper hole. I did it down around in the wind in the channel of the windshield. I did a little on the cowl vent. A couple here on the back of the car. There's one spot here where there was a chip paint. I sprayed it there. And then I actually went down and around and I did a little bit on the back of the car also just to tie it all in. Uh, there's a little spot here that I hit and then I got a lot, little bit of a bronze. Same thing. I kind of held it probably like a foot or so away and just very lightly just went like that down these belt lines. And the reason I did that is because if you look closely, you can see this little line here. That's the edge of the epoxy. So this is the start of all of the work that I did on the roof of the car. So you can see this little white line. And when I sanded the black off, kind of showed that white line a little bit. So I tried hiding it in a few spaces here and there, but I didn't go crazy. A uh, little bit of bronze here on the drip edge, a little bit on the door, some on the front here. Uh, just kind of a, a few random spots around. A couple spots here and there. Wherever I left a little bit of a black spot from wet, when I wet sanded, if there was some, some orange peel, I sprayed a little bit of bronze on some of those areas, like you can see here. Uh, just to try to give it, you know, just like a, a weathered look. So I'm really happy with the way it came out. This is the first time I've ever done anything like this. I mean, I've I've never even tried anything like this ever. I just I I looked at like I had said before, down low on the car, I'm looking for undertones. And what I mean by that is I it's turquoise, but I'm looking for the 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 greenish undertone, the rust color, a mixture of the green and the rust. And just trying to recreate those colors. And that's what I did on the top of the car. So I'm going to do a quick walk around so you can see the whole car in its entirety. And hopefully you guys will appreciate what I did. I haven't finished inside yet. I did spray all of this turquoise and then black over it. So this can be sanded down. I just haven't done it yet. Uh, I'm trying to get to work on the deck lid before it gets crazy late. So let's do a walk around. So you can see here what I did. You can see where I ended my tape and blended it in. You can see it here. Same thing, blended it in. I, I'm, I'm happy I didn't make things perfect because the little imperfections really show. Like this area here. This almost looks like a little rust spot, like a uh, antenna or something would have been there. I created that. So that's kind of a quick walk around on the car. Again, I'm working on the deck lid now. I sprayed my hinges earlier. Those are sitting there, uh, kind of waiting to go back on the car. So I have to put those on the car first and then mount the deck lid to those. So I'm just getting started on the deck lid now and really looking forward to getting that done, doing my little patina thing on that and then getting it bolted back on the car. So uh, I have a lot of things I need to do before my party tomorrow and my girlfriend left cookies out here. I told her I was going to eat them. She told me I better not. But... I'm gonna. She won't know because it'll be. This video won't come out till after. Till after the party. I'm gonna get to work on the deck lid. I'll, um, I'll catch you guys up to speed once that's done and it's on the car. Enjoy. So I have the deck lid sanded to about the same as what I would have had the body sanded earlier. I'm taking my green spray paint. People are probably cringing right now, but hey, this is how I did it.
fresh air in this place. Just kind of get it coated like that to give it that little bit of a green tinge like the lower portion of the car. And then I'm gonna take this bronze All right, guys, I got the deck lid sanded down. I took my green paint, which I showed you earlier, which is this. I just held it over it and sprayed in, in this direction. And then I sprayed this direction, just enough for it to settle down and get on the deck lid. That's just gonna give it that green undertone like the bottom of the car had. So that's what I did on, on the top of the car. And then I took my Rust-Oleum, this hammered bronze, and I just went around and hit a couple of spots where the where I left some of the black where it was a little lower where there was some orange peel and I just kind of went around hit a few spots here and there like that and then I'm gonna let this sit for like 10 15 minutes or so and then uh, I'm gonna sand it down can't sand it yet because it'll gum up on the paper Dee -dee -dee. All right, let me grab some fresh sandpaper. And then my water. It's gonna go right back over it again, just like I did before. And it's gonna take the highs down, but it's gonna leave, you can see the green coming off. But on some of the areas where I sprayed it a little heavier, it'll stay. And you'll still be able to see it. You'll still be able to see it. I want to just see that a tiny bit of green. And this bronze kind of looks like it's the metal underneath. Like I, it's almost like faded paint. I didn't know it was going to do that. I wanted it to look like rust. But that's just not really <laughs> what ended up happening. And some people might look at this and say, oh, that looks like crap. But again, I'm trying to recreate the bottom half of the car so I don't have to paint the entire car. I didn't want to paint the entire car. I wanted I appreciate the older paint for what it is. And I wanted to take a stab at recreating this this old paint job without it looking stupid, I guess. I'm trying to do this car justice. So I'm sanding off the light green coat and a little bit of the bronze. Definitely don't want to leave it the way it came out of the can because it just it really looks fake.
green here. So I'm gonna get rid of some of this green. I really see the green. I don't want, want the I want the green to look like it's the metal change like changing the color of the paint. Like the rust coming through and it's just starting to change the color of the paint. And we have it. That's my deck lid. That's how I did the entire car. You can see where I already broke through. I don't want to do that anymore. So I'm being careful. Yeah, I'm happy with that. All right, so I'm gonna put the deck lid on the car and then I'm gonna mount my hinges. I'm gonna get these hinges mounted. Don't know which one's which. But, I guess we'll figure it out if it doesn't fit. I only painted the outside of the deck lid. I didn't paint underneath. I want it to be old looking. That looks pretty good. Let's get, I don't know if this is right. Put some bolts in. Well guys, that's it. The deck lid's on the car. I think it looks good. I think I might add a little bit of black paint over it again and kind of darken it up a little bit because the tops of the rear quarters are a little bit darker. Actually, this side's not bad. This side looks like it's just a little darker. But that's the deck lid. It's on. It's functioning. And this is the car. This is it, done. Except for the firewall. It's uh, it's done. I think what I'm gonna do in the future is probably do a matte clear on it because there is a few spots where there's metal showing through, with the sheet metal where I had sanded through uh, when I took the original black paint off the cart when I got it in June. So I think what I'll do is I'll hit it with a matte clear and that'll really I think finish it off um, it's been a long day it's been a long night I'm gonna go in get some sleep get cleaned up get to some, some sleep because I have my party tomorrow a lot of people looking forward to seeing this car in person and I'll be happy to show it off tomorrow it's been a lot of work but it was worth it I think it looks great I'm happy with it it takes a lot to make me happy sometimes. I'm everybody as as a lot of people are, you're your worst critic. So and I certainly am mine. So thank you everyone for sticking along, hanging along, hanging out, sticking around, watching this thing come together. Next for me is gonna be to get the motor and transmission connected. The motor's not rebuilt yet. It's not I'm not gonna rebuild the motor, I'm just gonna freshen it up, go through it. I have I have I think everything at this point to put the motor together. Um, there was some parts hard to find parts for early Oldsmobile engines uh, 371s especially so when people have them a lot of times they just don't want to part with them so I've been fortunate recently I had some money set aside from Carlisle I was able to find several things that I had been looking for for a while for the motor I have everything now I think it's the motors all together for the most part sitting on the stand I have the bell housing adapter the transmission for that's going to go on the back of the motor so i'm hoping maybe next week i can get the motor and transmission bolted together and get that set in where it needs to be 
and uh, get some motor mounts made yada 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 so yeah just the list goes on and on so thanks again for watching i appreciate it and i'll see you guys on the next one take care have a good night so this is the final result of my paint job i blended in the cowl with the tropic turquoise and then did what i did to it to make it look old it already had an old look to it i added the black to the top as you saw in the photos or in the video i blended the tropic turquoise down what did i do i painted the tropic turquoise to here and then what i did was i masked the car after i peeled it from the bottom of this belt line down and then i sprayed this black as a transition area I spray painted the top of the cowl black, this whole area black, down the rear of the quarters black, across the top of the deck lid, things like that. So painted all that black. On top of that, I had sprayed this. I took the Tropic Turquoise that I still had left. I had a little bit left in the cup from the night before when I painted it. And I just dusted the tops of the quarters to transition the color from the roof down onto the top of the quarters. And then I sprayed it black. And then I sanded the whole car throughout. So you can see some color, some difference in colors throughout on the car. A little bit of brown here, brown here. And if you look throughout the car, it's it's got a lot of brown, a lot of rust coming through. This is still from the wet sanding process, but this was all brown. This was all existing. This black was the black that I originally sanded off the car back in the day. Uh, you know, there's no way I can recreate the top identical to the bottom. And I was, I understood that. I wasn't entirely trying to do that. However, I was just trying to not make it too obvious. So you guys saw how I did it in the video. I broke it down. Some of you guys may think that I ruined this car, that I didn't do a good job, that I didn't make it look like the bottom. You may think that I ruined the car because I didn't paint it all one color. It's totally fine with me. Uh, at the end of the day, I'm not going to stop working on this car because someone doesn't like how I painted it. Uh, in the future, maybe someday, will the car ever get complete shiny paint? Who knows? Maybe. But for right now in my life, <clears throat> where I'm at with the car and what my plans are with the car, I didn't want to do shiny paint. And the reason for that is... I'm putting an older motor in this car. It's going to have old chrome, old dirty aluminum intake parts, old carburetors. I'm not refinishing anything. I'm going to leave it old. I want this car to look like it's an old hot rod. Um, so I'm not going to go and spend six, eight weeks painting the car to then put old chrome wheels on it, old chrome valve covers, old chrome pulley, fan old carburetors old chrome air cleaners or old scoop air cleaners uh you know frog mouth scoops whatever i'm just i'm not gonna spend a ton of time and money painting this car to make it look perfect only to, to, the, to then add rusty old i don't know additions to the car so i get what you guys are saying some people don't like the patina um neither do i I don't like a patina paint job, 99.9% .9 of them. And maybe I'm biased, but this one's just a little different. There were people that came to this party that I that didn't know that I was in the process of painting this car. And when they looked at the car, they loved it. It wasn't until someone told them that I had just painted it literally the night before. And just finished it the night before. They had no idea that the car was even painted. So... I tried to do the car justice if you look close there are very few areas that show that the car was painted and i think once this thing's all together and it's got the old ratty chrome grill shell it's just all gonna tie in this is my next project i'm working on video will be out next week probably the weekend uh this is the roof panel the metal panel that I removed from the roof of the car. 
I'm using it and I'm making a re removable insert. This long grain came with my 29 sedan when I bought that six years ago as a parts pile. I'm going to leave that roof open. I had no intentions on using this or I was going to use a pleated white Naga hide. So I just decided I have it. I'm going to use it. I have the foam that I already cut out. I'm not even sure where I put it. I think it's under here. It's all cut out to the shape that I need. Oh, it's right here. This is going to go underneath the vinyl roof material. I'm just laying this vinyl roof material on here because it's been in a box for six years and it's got a crease in it. So I'm hoping from just sitting here that crease is going to lay down. So I'm going to make that removable. Uh, but that's how the car was back in the day. It had an insert. And again, I'm just trying to pay tribute to the car. Even though it's been changed, even though there's been things been done to it over the years, it doesn't mean I can't pay tribute to the car by closely resemble having bringing it back to closely resemble what it once was back in the day. So, um, so yeah, I just wanted to do a quick walk around and just kind of let people know where my brain was at. Appreciate the comments. Appreciate the the do's and the don'ts and the goods and the bads. Um, ultimately, it's it means that I'm doing the right thing. I'm creating a buzz. You know, people have their opinions about the car and what they feel that the car deserves and should be. And, and I certainly appreciate that. But at the end of the day, I'm going to build the car the way I want to build it. It's my money. It's my car. It's my time. It's my knowledge. And it may not be what someone else's is, but it's what I have to give this car. And like I said, at the end of the day, I think I'm doing a pretty good job. But again, like I said, I'm biased. So... Thanks again for everybody following along, watching. Um, I hope you guys can look at this car, this video, this YouTube channel with an open mind. I'm not going to... This isn't the people's car. That's the best way I can put it. I'm not building this car for the people. I'm not building this car for the comments. I'm not doing... Uh, what's the word? Um, I don't even know what the word is just it's my car i'm gonna build it the way i want to build it you know i'm not having people vote on what i'm gonna do next maybe i'll do that on the next car you know so that's a day after halloween i'm stealing candy don't tell anybody so thanks for following along i appreciate it as i say after every video I have stickers and t-shirts. If anybody's interested in sticker, stickers and t-shirts, shoot me an email. Thisoldhotrod at gmail.com. Um, t-shirts are 20 bucks, $5 shipping, so the $25 shipped. Lower 48. Buy a t-shirt, I'll throw in some stickers if you want some stickers. Figured it would be 5 bucks for a pack of stickers. I think I have four different designs at this point. I'll post up some images. I'll show you what the t-shirts look like. I think they came out really good. Local company did them for me. Um, yeah, so thanks again. Appreciate everybody following along. I'll see you soon.